you using a cane? <laughs> Best, are you using yeah. a cane? Yes, I've used a cane for some time. Uh, <clears throat> uh, they uh, they got me a wheelchair, and uh, <laughs> that's caused me more problem already <laughs> than, uh, than uh, before. Maybe I'll, I'll get better with it, but uh, uh, they're very, very helpful, very considerate, and, and uh, uh, take good care of me. So, uh, Do you need help in the shower? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Can you use a walker? <clears throat> At least don't work. I, I can, I can use a walker if I don't. <laughs> Part of the problem is I have this uh, chair, wheel chair, which you can use as a walker, and it's gotten me in trouble twice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, I slept for probably <clears throat> two, or th two or three or more hours last night on the floor. Oh, oh no. I my bed. I uh, got up to go to the bathroom and uh, uh, was use, going to use the walker and it somehow it got away from me or backed up or something and, and I ended up on the floor. And, oh, oh, Russ. Russ, do you have a medic? The Lord be with you. And also with you. All right, deep breath in, deep breath out. For those of you online, you missed, uh, we had to emergency print some bulletins. So we were running a couple minutes late, but we got them. Uh, they're warm in everyone's hand and we should be ready to go. Uh, I'm Pastor Dexter and with me is Pastor Liz. And we wanna welcome you all to Longview Presbyterian Church. If you're present with us here in this physical space, welcome. We're glad to see you. If you're joining us on Zoom at home or wherever you might be, we say welcome as you join us today. We're so happy you are here, all of us. We are a community of faith that is seeking Christ's way and welcoming all people. And we're so incredibly thankful that we can gather today as the body of Christ. In this hybrid phase of worship, there's a few reminders for you. We won't have any singing in person besides a few designated people with singing masks, but you are welcome to hum along. Please keep your masks on at all times. Um, and we'll also have all speakers, as you can tell, wearing masks uh, due to the renewed mask mandate uh, for Washington State. We plan to have a fellowship Zoom gathering this week for you to stay connected to your LPC family, accessible by the same Zoom link we always use for LPC events. That link is always available on our website. Join us this Tuesday at 7 p.m. for a time of check-in, fellowship, laughter, and prayer. 
We also invite everyone to join us for our first service of healing and wholeness this Thursday, September 2nd, at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. We've decided to keep this service completely virtual on Zoom for the time being, so join us on the regular LPC Zoom link with your own candle and something to light it with for an hour of contemplative uh, music and prayer, scripture and silence. It's the perfect service for you if you're looking for a space of centering, peaceful worship, and of course in these tumultuous times, a time to pray. Everyone is welcome to attend. At this point, I would like to welcome all kids uh, at heart uh, to join with me in the kids' time, and we'll continue to record these. Uh, so if anyone is able to watch it later, they'll also be able to participate. So what do you think of when you think of God? What role does God play in your life? Any job titles or descriptions for what role God plays in your life? Feel free to shout it out. Be just like kids. Advisor. Advisor. Signpost. Signpost. Presence. Presence. Creator. Creator. Comforter. Comforter. Friend. Teacher. Lord. Savior. Chef. Potter. God plays many roles in our life, and we use lots of descriptions to try and understand what that means. In our scripture today, we hear about God as Lord, who is giving commandments to the Israelite people to follow. And then later, we're going to hear about God as Jesus, acting as a teacher, teaching us how to keep focused on God's desire for life for all of us. The important thing to remember is that God desires and longs for you to be filled with life and abundant life. This means that you are free to share that loving lifestyle with others. The beautiful thing about our God is that they are constantly working for us in whatever role it might be to be filled with love and grace and joy. And when we work with God in that work, signpost, comforter, creator, friend, teacher, we also can be filled with love and grace and joy in that work. So will you join me in a repeat after me prayer? Dear God, God. thank you for your many roles in my life. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for shaping me. Help me to share that hope and love with others. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. amen. Thanks, everyone, for participating, and I hope you kids at home are able to watch and uh, to partake in our worship. I now would like to invite Sharon up. Uh, to lead us in our land acknowledgement and our call to worship. Good morning. Our church has begun a practice of land acknowledgement at the beginning of our public worship services, acknowledging that the building that we occupy is on land stolen from its original stewards, the Cowlitz Indian tribe. The Cowlitz tribe's culture department provided us with this statement to begin our church gatherings. Please join me in speaking these words together. It is vital to honor those who came before us and acknowledge the long history of what is now Southwest Washington State. This area has been home to ancestors of the Cowlitz Indian tribe for thousands of years. The land with its rich resources enabled the Cowlitz people to flourish and they stewarded the land with their traditional culture. Today, we must appreciate the persistence of the Cowlitz people 
and the important role they play in our region as together we steward the land for all our descendants. If you are zooming in and not coming from Carlet's land today, I invite you to go into our chat function and acknowledge whose tribal lands you are zooming in from right now. Thank you for taking part in this practice with us. It's a moment of turning around each Sunday to walk in a new direction of justice together. Join me now in our call to worship. We gather in the presence of a non-binary God. Our many dimensions are God of multifacets. The divine is not the enforcer of a linear line, but love who expands as the cosmos. The spirit delights in all our permutations. Let us gather in the midst of God unfolding. I now invite you to hum along to our opening hymn, number 263, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. keeping our hearts from the Holy One? Do we deceive ourselves thinking we are religious rather than living faithful lives? Let us pray together our confessing prayer, trusting in the one who seeks to make us whole. Holy One of leaders and little children, we hear your words every day, but rarely live them out. Our anger roars like a flooded creek, but our forgiveness drips like a rusty faucet. Our impetuous tongues rush to judgment, 
while our words of hope sound like a sluggish soundtrack. We listen with impatient ears to the cries of the poor. Powerful creator, may your mercy fall on us like a summer shower on parched grass. May your hope overflow our hearts. May your beloved child, Jesus Christ, speak to us and call us to life. Amen. Listen and understand. The voice of the beloved speaks to us, implanting the word of hope, the word of grace, and the word of forgiveness into our hearts. We listen and understand. Every gift comes from God, especially the gifts of mercy and love. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's time to pass the peace of Christ to one another. Uh, we invite you to use the sign language that we've been learning to pass that peace, as well as online you'll be able to unmute and speak the peace of Christ to one another. So just a reminder of the sign language. We do peace, and that's like be still. Peace, two high fives, and then down. Be with, two fists together. You, empty punch the other person. Let's try that again. Peace, be with, you're okay. You. And then if you want to respond, you do a thumb and a pinky, and you point at yourself and the other person, and also with you. Also with you. So feel free to share the peace of Christ to one another. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ be with all of you. Peace of Christ be with you. Hi, Bonnie. Peace of Christ. Hello, Marlene. How are you doing? Good. Peace of Christ. How are you both? Peace, Patty. Hi, Lonnie. Hi, Lonnie. Hello. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace, Patty. Hello, Andy and Thank Jennifer. Thank you, everyone, for joining in with us. I would now like to invite Sharon up for our prayer for illumination and the first reading of scripture. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, the cruelness of oppressive forces enrages us. We know it doesn't have to be this way. May we follow in the legacy of our teacher Jesus, who amidst empire lived creatively and compassionately. In our heartbreak, comfort us and open us to your expansive ways through the reading and the preaching of your word. Amen. When I read our text from Deuteronomy this morning, paired with the text from Mark, I actually read it a few days ago, it occurred to me that um, we're looking at worshiping a non-binary God and trying to make sense of scripture that might have been written by people who are slightly binary in their approach. Um, sometimes nationalism and exclusivism pop up in our scriptures, don't they? And so it's not a new thing in our culture. So that was just a thought that I, that came to me as I was looking at the contrast between Deuteronomy and our gospel lesson. Now hear these words from Deuteronomy 4, verses 1 through 2 and 6 through 9. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and the ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord, the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment 
to the peoples, who when they hear all these statutes will say, surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other, what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading today comes to us from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Listen now to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts, as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say that if anyone tells father or mother, whatever support you might have had from me is korban, that is an offering to God, then then you no longer permit doing anything for a father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed on. And you do many things like this. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside of a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart, but the stomach, and goes out into the sewer? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, it is what comes out of a person that defiles, for it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All of these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. 
This is the word of the Lord. My own tendency when I read passages like this one is to think, gosh, those religious leaders were idiots. <laughs> How could they have missed something so obvious? How could they possibly think that hand-washing traditions are just as important as who's welcome at the table? The Pharisees and scribes end up being these kind of two-dimensional straw men in my imagination, easy to blow over, the kind that I can cross off my list and say, well, at least I'm not like them. At least I'm not as obviously judgmental and thick-headed as they were. And that's why I appreciate theologian Debbie Thomas. I have brought her up many times to you. She's a wonderful companion for texts just like these ones. And she reminded me this week of some really important backgrounds that I want to share with you to this passage. Consider their context. The first century Jewish people among whom Jesus ministers is an, an oppressed minority living in an occupied land. How are they to keep their faith viable against the backdrop of colonization? In the midst of religious and cultural diversity, how should they maintain their identity, their integrity, their heritage? The Pharisee's solution to the problem, Debbie writes, is to contain and codify the sacred. How can God's people best practice their religion among the surrounding pagans? They can create and maintain a purity culture, a culture that clearly delineates who is in and who is out, who is clean and who is unclean, who deserves God's favor and who doesn't. They can practice the ancient rituals of the elders down to the last letter as if tradition itself is the gateway to holiness. They can refuse table fellowship with the unwashed, the tax collectors, sex workers, and other morally compromised sinners. They can set themselves apart, Debbie writes, as God's righteous and holy people. In that context of being an oppressed, colonized minority with pressure to assimilate on every side, it makes sense that the Pharisees and scribes would be white-knuckling their ancestors' tradition with such ferocity. And beyond that, as Debbie points out later in her writing, we need to read this text closely and realize that Jesus never actually takes issue with the tradition of hand-washing in this passage. Jesus was not anti-tradition or anti-ritual. As a faithful Jew, he came from a people who, as we heard in the Deuteronomy passage, were called to closely adhere to God's law to show their wisdom and discernment to the peoples who were surrounding them. Traditions themselves were not the problem. What Jesus calls out here are traditions that get hardened and calcified, stuck at one point in time to the point that they cause God's people to miss God's heart entirely. It's what Jesus means when he quotes Isaiah in his critique of the religious leaders. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. It's important for us to understand how these religious folk got to this point of embracing faith traditions and practices that actually led them away from God's heart. Because the point of this is to ask ourselves, how do we fall into the same trap? In what ways do we get stuck in traditions that are actually leading us away from the heart of God? 
Are there any practices or ways of being that exist in our own church community that have gotten hardened or calcified that maybe drew us closer to God in the past but get in the way of God's calling in our lives now? Are there spiritual practices in our own lives that maybe helped us grow in the past but have grown stale and maybe only serve now to keep us comfortable and stagnant and safe? And most important to me as I read this text is another question. How do I know the difference? How do I know if the traditions and ways of being that I practice would get me a you hypocrites call out from Jesus. And this is the good news. Jesus answers that question for us in this passage when he says that there is nothing outside a person that by going in that can defile, but that the things that come out are what defile. In other words, we are called to measure our traditions by what they cause to come out of us, by the fruit that they produce in our lives. For every practice and pattern and ritual and tradition in our way of being, Jesus invites us to examine it closely and regularly. Does this practice cause me to more fully live into the life of a liberating God? Does this tradition give me the courage to speak up about injustice, especially in a small town environment where everybody knows everybody? Does this ritual refuel me with the energy to welcome somebody new to the table with curiosity and openness? Does this pattern in my life cause me to cling to my money as a safety net, or does it fill me with the energy to redistribute it to anyone as they have need? Does this thing I've always done give me the humility to always be a learner, to admit that I have never arrived at a final destination in my understanding of God and her call on my life? Does this tradition ground me more firmly in the reality that I can never, ever be separated from the love of God in Jesus? And you know what? What a good moment for us to be asking questions like these. Because right now, we actually don't have that much of a choice about all of our traditions and rituals and practices being totally up in the air. So it's the perfect time to hold each habit of our daily, ordinary lives loosely. Every practice here in our worship and church life together, every rule and regulation by which we have lived and ask ourselves, does this thing, whatever it is, help me get caught up in Jesus' way of liberation for all creation? And if it doesn't, even if it hurts at first, my friends, this text challenges ourselves and each other to thank that tradition for what it was and then let it go. And in the same breath, we are called to open our hearts and spirits to new ways of being that Jesus might be calling us to practice. Because maybe the point is that then we won't miss what the Pharisees and scribes couldn't see in this text when they lasered in on the disciples' hand-washing practices. They completely missed the feasting, the fact that Jesus was gathering with disciples from all walks of life to share a meal where everybody had enough to eat, where everybody was welcome, where all kinds of people were joining together in a new and beloved community. So may we question and test every practice and tradition in our lives and as a church family. And may we try on new ones that we can practice together until every part of our way of being helps us to join that feast, that party 
of liberation. Amen. I invite you now to hum along under your mask with our responding hymn, 88, Spirit of the Living God. We will sing this together twice through. continue our time in prayer, sharing our joys and concerns uh, for those on Zoom through the chat function, or you can always reach out to uh, us in advance to have those added to the list. We also have a prayer request list that will be at the front of the um, entrance hall when you enter for you to be able to write your prayer requests on to be read um, and prayed for in church. Um, at the end of each of our prayers, we will say, God in your grace. And then all together we will respond, you receive our prayers, O God. We will end with a time of silent prayer before the Lord's Prayer, uh, where we can share those prayer concerns that sit on our heart, our mind, our gut, that weigh too heavily to be spoken out loud. We know that God receives those prayers, the deepest cries of our hearts. Today we're going to start our prayer time with a special prayer litany, to lift up our children and youth, their teachers, paraeducators, school administrators, educational staff, and all others involved in in-school and online learning um, as it comes, along with every parent, grandparent, and grown-up who is a part of a child support system. As the first day of school approaches this coming week, we lift all of you up in our prayers, and we invite the whole congregation to join us uh, in this responsive prayer, you speaking the words in bold. Let us pray. Merciful God, we are grateful for the resilience, innovation, and determination our students, teachers, school staff, parents, and administrators demonstrated and developed over the past year. We begin this new school year in prayer because we are anxious for our students to resume school in person, yet still be safe from COVID-19. We pray for a better year, for a safe return to classrooms, for the health of students, teachers, and school staff, for school boards and administrators under pressure to make difficult decisions, 
and for parents exhausted by the uncertainty and constantly changing plans. Help us, holy God, to bear with one another in love. As we face the new challenges this year will inevitably bring. We pray that our teachers banked enough summer renewal to face any new disruptions. We ask that the hard lessons students have learned since the start of this pandemic will give them the confidence and courage to face whatever lies ahead. With confidence in your ability to do more than we ask or imagine, we pray that your hope will bring new life. Bless us, holy God, in our efforts to protect and care for students so they can focus on their healthy development and their studies. Lead us all to health and healing. God, in your grace, you receive our prayers, O oh God. We pray this morning along with the McLeods for the family of their neighbor, Bernie Schockelt who lost his battle with cancer this past week. In this time of sorrow, Holy One, draw Bernie's family together to grieve and remember his life and legacy. Comfort Bernie's family in this time of painful loss and hold them close in your love. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our, our prayers, O oh God. We pray alongside Kay and Ron Naff for the family and friends of Gary Rose, who passed away um, on August 20th. Mm -hmm. Holy One, we lift up the family and friends and loved ones of Gary. <sighs> Surround them with your comfort and your care uh, in this time of grief and pain. Surround them with a community of love that will be there and support them in the days, weeks, and months to come. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our, our prayers, O oh God. We lift up prayers of thanksgiving from Jennifer and Andy for the love and support they have received from their LPC family upon their wedding last weekend. God, we thank you for the community of faith that has surrounded Jennifer and Andy, for the ways that they have been woven into our community. We celebrate with them. We also pray for Jennifer, who is dealing with a kidney infection right now. And we ask, healing God, that you would um, bring her a speedy recovery and a full restoration of her body as soon as possible. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our, our prayers, O oh God. We pray another prayer of celebration and thanksgiving for the celebration of George and Millie's 63rd year of marriage. <laughs> yeah, round of applause for George and Millie. <laughs> God, we ask that you surround George and Millie with your love and your care as they celebrate together and with family and as they've done uh, recently. Uh, watch over them in the coming days and weeks that their marriage would continue to grow with love and with grace. God, in your grace, you receive our prayers, O oh God. We pray uh, for Betty's son, Andrew, um, as he continues to face health challenges. We pray that all the doctors would be working hard and be, get accurate information about what's going on with him. Holy God, we pray that you would bring Andrew back to health as soon as possible and that you would hold him in your peace in the meantime. God, in your grace, you receive our prayers, O oh God. We'll take a moment now for silent prayer to lift up those prayer requests that feel too heavy to say out loud. Let us pray. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our, our prayers, prayers O oh God. God. We pray together to our parenting God, mother and father, as Jesus taught us. Our, our father, father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We desire nourishing food, bodily safety, and access to resources for all beloveds because we know that our flourishing is bound up with one another's. So in that spirit of mutual well-being, let's take this time to bring forth our offerings so that our bodies might rest in the care that we offer one another. If you would like to continue giving financially during this time, you can still mail your checks made out to Longview Presbyterian Church to P.O. Box 1613 in Longview, or you can give online. The details are on our website at longviewpress.org forward slash giving. We also have an offering plate at the entrance and the exit of our sanctuary today, so you can place your offerings there as you come and go. We also want to keep reminding you of this paper chain that is on the cross. Uh, before the pandemic, that was a, a practice we had of during the offering time, people writing on these little slips that you see here, all the ways that they gave of themselves that week, whether it was a gift in kind, uh, a gift of their time or their talent for the work of liberation that God is doing in our community and through our church. So though we're not adding to it right now, we invite you every time you look at it to reflect on all the ways that you have given of your life this past week. We also want to remind our church family during this difficult season that the Deacons Fund is here for you. We know this is a season of added financial stress for many people, and the Deacons Fund is one way that our church family can show you care and tangible support. So if you're in need of financial assistance, you can contact me, Pastor Liz, at liz at longviewpress.org. You can also call me on the pastoral care emergency line, 360-358-5765. Our church family would love to come alongside you. We invite you now to consider all the gifts that we have given as a community of faith as we enjoy a live offertory from our church musician, Teresa Schumacher. Join your hearts with mine in prayer. Spirit of the living Christ, we dedicate these offerings to the protection and the flourishing of the beloved community. Undo any inclination we have to police each other and instead equip us for creative and sustainable relationship tending. In your compassionate and radical name we pray. Amen. 
We invite you now to hum along with our sending hymn, number 313, Lord, make us more holy. Lord, make us more holy. Lord, make us more holy. Lord, make us more holy until we meet again. Holy, holy, holy until. Lord, make us more loving. Lord, make us more loving. Lord, make us more loving until we meet again. Loving, loving, loving until we meet again. Lord, make us more patient. Lord, make us more patient. Lord, make us more patient until we meet again. Patient, patient, patient until we meet again. Lord, make us more faithful. Lord, make us more faithful. Lord, make us more faithful until we meet again. Faithful, faithful, faithful until we meet again. Thank you so much for joining us today at Longview Presbyterian Church as we worship in this hybrid space where everyone is welcome. Don't forget to join us Tuesday at 7 p.m. for our fellowship time on Zoom and this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. for our service of healing and wholeness. Everyone is welcome and both are accessible via the same Zoom link you always use to join us at Longview Presbyterian Church. Friends, go forth in confidence, for you belong. All parts of you belong. No one can make the table of God unset for you. Nothing can make the Spirit's arms unopened to you. No permutation of who you are is anything but blessed. So resisting every force that demeans us and others, may we, as God's people, feel our belovedness deep in our bones, that all beings might feel their true selves in the light of our compassionate gaze. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the joy and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, today and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 We invite you to join us for our postlude from Teresa Schumacher as we close our time together. Uh, for those in person, we won't have inside fellowship time per usual, so uh, feel free to head on outdoors. Um, and for those of you on Zoom, feel free to stick around for a time of uh, connection and fellowship. Thank you all for joining us for worship today.